This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 20 from Module 3, Composite Area Problems. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students find the area of regions in the coordinate plane with polygonal boundaries by decomposing the plane into triangles and quadrilaterals, including regions with polygonal holes. Students find composite areas of regions in the coordinate plane by decomposing the plane into familiar figures, triangles, quadrilaterals, circles, semicircles, and quarter circles. Pause the video and copy the essential question, how do you find the area of composite figures? Example 1. Find the composite area of the shaded region. Use 3.14 for pi. We want to start this problem by looking at what we know about the figure. We can see that there are two circles, a larger circle and a smaller circle. And we can determine the diameter or the radius of both of those by counting on the coordinate grid. So let's go ahead and start with that. The radius of the smaller square from the center is 1, 2. And the radius of the larger circle is one more unit. So the radius of the larger circle is 3. There is no formula for determining the area of this shape. So what we want to do is take what we know about the area of a circle and use that information to determine the area. What my plan is going to be is I will find the area of the entire large circle. And since I don't want the entire area, I will want to get rid of that smaller area. So I will need to know what the area of the smaller circle is as well. And then in mathematics, when you want to erase something or get rid of it, you would have to subtract it. So my plan is to find the area of the larger circle, to find the area of the smaller circle, and then subtract. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those figures down here. Go ahead and pause the video and sketch those. And again, our plan is to find the area of the larger circle and then find the area of the smaller circle and then subtract those areas. So the area formula is pi r squared. So we'll start with the area formula for each one. And we'll take pi r squared for the first, and we'll subtract pi r squared for the second. And we'll substitute the radius of the larger circle, which is 3. So that's going to be 3 squared. And it says to use 3.14 for pi, so we'll replace the pi symbol with 3.14. Bring down the subtraction problem. Replace the pi symbol with 3.14. And replace the radius of the smaller circle with 2 squared. Then we can calculate that answer. For the larger circle, we've got 3.14 times 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. And on the smaller square, or the smaller circle, we've got 3.14 times 2 squared. So that's going to be 3.14 times 4. For the larger the area is 28.26. For the smaller circle, the area is 12.56. As a final step, what we want to do is to take the area of the smaller circle and erase it or subtract it so that we are just left with the uh, disk on the outside. So we'll go ahead and subtract that and that gives us a final area of 15.7. I also show, want to show you another way that you might find easier. So we'll go back to the formula of pi r squared minus pi r squared. And again, this first one is for the large circle, and then we'll be subtracting the area of the smaller circle. So if we substitute the radius for each one, and here we've got 3 and 2, and we have pi times 3 squared minus pi times 2 squared. 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. So when you have a coefficient with pi, generally the coefficient goes first. So we'll call that 9 pi. 
and the same here. We'll put that as 4 pi. Since these are like terms, you can subtract them. So 9 pi minus 4 pi is 5 pi. Then we take that answer and now substitute 3.14 for pi. So that's going to be 5 times 3.14. And if you multiply 5 times 3.14, you will get 15.7. So the area of our circle, or just the shaded region of our circle, is 15.7. Now let's take a look at what the units were. It does not say whether they are inches or centimeters. So what we'll do is we'll use U for units, and we'll say units squared. 15.7 square units. Next we'll be doing example 2. In example two, it says find the area of the figure that consists of a rectangle with a semicircle on top. Use 3.14 for pi. So we take a look at our figure and what we notice is that we have a rectangle and a semicircle. And the width of the rectangle is labeled four and the entire length of the figure is labeled, but the length of the rectangle is not labeled. So we will we'll need to figure that out. Additionally, we will need to know the radius of the circle in order to find the area of the semicircle. So let's take a look. Well, we'll need a, a plan of how we're going to find the area of these this one figure. What we want to do is we want to find the area of this rectangle and find the area of the semicircle. And then once you know that both of those, would you add them or subtract them? You would add them. So that will be our plan. We'll find the area of the rectangle, the area of the semicircle, and then we'll add those together. So let's go ahead and write the formula so we know what dimensions we need. The area of a rectangle is length times width. The area of the semicircle, now remember this is half a circle, so we want half times pi r squared. So for the rectangle, we will need to know the length and the width and we already know the width is four. For the circle, the semicircle, we will need to know the radius, and the radius is not labeled, but what is labeled is the width of the rectangle, and the width of the rectangle is the same as the diameter of that circle. So if the diameter of the circle is four, then the radius would be half of that. Again, the diameter is four, then the radius would be half of that. So the radius is going to equal two. Then we also need to know the length of the rectangle. So we know that the radius of the circle is two, and this is the radius of the circle right here. So if we label this part as two, then the difference would be the length of the rectangle. So the whole length of that segment is 7.5, and we take away the 2 for the radius, and that's going to give us 5.5. So this distance, the length of the rectangle, is 5.5. So now we know the length and the width of our rectangle. We know the radius of the circle, so we're ready to complete the problem. So we're going to take area is equal to length times width. And we're going to add to that 1 half times pi r squared. So the length and the width, that's 5.5 times 4. And for the semicircle, 1 half. And it says to use 3.14 for pi. And the radius is 2. And we need radius squared, so that's radius squared. So then we'll go ahead and calculate the answer. The area of the rectangle is 22 square meters. And then the area of the semicircle is 6.28 square units. And so the area combined is equal to 28.28. 28 square meters. So to summarize what we've just done on that figure, 
We started with a figure that is composed of a semicircle and a rectangle. We separated them into two figures. We determined the missing measurements, and then we wrote a formula for each shape. Then we substituted the numbers for the variables. We calculated the area of the rectangle and the area of the semicircle, and finally we added those together to get the total area. Next, we'll take a look at example three. In example three, it says find the area of the shaded region. So the shaded region is a triangle. And you think, well, why wouldn't you just use the formula for a triangle, one half times base times height? If you look at the blue triangle, the base and the height are not labeled. So we cannot use that formula. What we can do, though, is we can find the area of the entire square and then find the area of each of these triangles, each of these triangles, and then if you don't want the area of the triangles, you only want the area of the shaded portion in the middle, then you subtract them. And that would leave us with the area of the shaded region. So it says redraw the figure separating the triangles, then label the lengths discussing the calculations. So pause the video and sketch this diagram where we have separated the figures. So what you're going to be doing right now is to draw this figure onto your paper. What we want to do next is label all of the dimensions on the triangles. So we'll start with the top. This segment is 20 centimeters. On the left, this is 20 centimeters. Down here on the bottom, this is 8 centimeters. And that is 6 centimeters. Then the next one we'll figure out is this one. If we know that the total going across is 20 and this is 8, then the difference between 20 and 8 would be 12. So this segment is 12. Then we'll figure out this side on the right. So we know the figure, the whole side is 20, and this part is 6. So the difference would be 20 take away 6, which would be 14. So we go ahead and label that. Now what we can do is find the area of the entire figure. Find the area of the entire figure, which is a square. So pause the video and grab a piece of paper, and we'll do the work on a separate piece of paper, and then we'll tape it into your book. Okay, so if you've got your paper, what we want to do is we want to find the area of the entire square. Then we're going to find the area of each of these shapes. And then we will subtract these areas from the square and we'll be left with this area. So we've got that triangle, and this triangle, and this triangle. So let's go ahead and write out our strategy. We're going to take the area of this square, which is length times width, and we are going to subtract these three areas. The area of the first triangle would be 1 half times base times height, and the second triangle, 1 half times base times height and the third triangle, one-half times base times height. And we're going to add those together, and then we're going to subtract them from the rectangle. And that's going to leave us with the area of the remaining triangle. So the length and the width of the original square is 20 and 20. So we've got 20 times 20 for the square. Then for this triangle, we've got one-half times 12 times 20. For the small triangle, we've got 1 half times 8 times 6. And for the triangle in the upper right-hand corner, we have 1 half times 20 times 14. So we'll calculate the area of the rectangle. 20 times 20 is 400. We'll calculate the area of each triangle. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 20 is 120. Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Half of 20 is 10. 10 times 14 is 140. 
Then we'll add these together to get the total amount of the triangle that we are going to subtract. 120 plus 24 plus 140 equals 284. So the area of the square, which is 400, minus 284, which is the three triangles, equals 116. So the remaining triangle, the area of the shaded figure that we wanted, is 116 meters squared. I'm going to double check that unit of measure, centimeters squared. So let's go ahead and change that. It was centimeters squared. 116 centimeters squared is the area of the triangle that was shaded. In this lesson, you learned how to find the area of a shaded figure and a composite figure. For the composite figure, we find the area of the large circle, and then we find the area of the small circle, and then we subtract. For the composite figure, we break it up into familiar figures that we know the formulas for. We find the area of each figure, and the semicircle was 1 half times pi r squared. And then you add those together. So again, on the left with the circles, that's pi r squared using the radius of the large circle, and pi r squared using the radius of the small circle, and then you subtract to find your total area.